Hi, I'm Dave. Many new EV owners have no idea that they can charge at public charges and pay as much as 85 pence per kilowatt hour or as low as 22 pence and get exactly the same electricity. Some have their EVs thrust on them as a company car get little or no help. Stick around as Dave takes it on. When the good old days, if you bought a Tesla, you got exclusive membership of the Tesla Supercharger Network, which was manufactured by Tesla specifically for Teslas and became the largest, most reliable, easiest to operate and cheapest ultra rapid charging network in the world. Everyone else didn't. Well, today all that has changed and most people have no idea what's available to them now. Well, all Tesla Model 3 and Model Y on sale in the UK for the last five years have a CCS2 socket. 99% of all other new EVs, like BW, Mercedes, Hyundai, also have a CCS2 socket. Well, just like their new mobile phone chargers have now changed to 100% USB-C, but some old existing Apple iPhones still have a lightning connector. Well, similarly, all new EVs will soon have CCS2, while a few older models will have a different plug. Soon, it will be 100% of all new EVs have CCS2, making EV charging on the road at public chargers really simple. One plug, one socket. All EV public rapid and ultra rapid chargers now are required by law to have a CCS2 plug, although some may still have additional plugs. All must now offer contactless payments without the use of an app or RFID card or any form of membership. At its simplest, any EV can pull into any EV public charger and connect and get a charge with only a contactless bank card. Except some Tesla superchargers. All Tesla cars come with an app which communicates with the car, the superchargers, the service centres, other Tesla cars and Tesla's main computer. It also stores the chosen payment data. When a Tesla driver inserts the supercharger CCS2 plug, the car communicates with Tesla, identifies the car, begins charging, stops at the selected limit and collects payment via the stored payment method with the correct amount. Literally, plug in, wait, remove plug, drive off. For this reason, early Tesla superchargers had no screen or contactless terminal and needed no app or RFID or anything else. No other manufacturers have a dedicated charging network using their own manufactured chargers. All CCS2 sockets on EVs are dual purpose. The top bit, the circular bit, called a Type 2, is designed for fast charging using AC current and the EV's onboard charger. These are typically around 7 or 11 kilowatts and are designed for slower overnight charging. The whole plug, including the two larger bottom terminals, are used as a CCS2 plug for rapid and ultra-rapid DC charging. This allows very much faster charging rates, usually over 100 kilowatts, and as much as 350 kilowatts, which are ideal for quick short stops on a road trip. Multiple EV public charging networks other than Tesla have been launched in the UK designed to charge any and all EVs, including Tesla cars when out on the road. All have CCS2 plugs and all are compatible with all CCS2 equipped cars. Although some chargers have chosen to add an additional plug, for example Chadamo, uh, to be able to charge Nissan Leafs which do not have CCS2 sockets. None of these EV public chargers have any direct central communication with all of the EVs on the road, so all EV public chargers require their own method of payment. By law, all must now include a contactless terminal and support drive up, swipe and charge. Individual public charger networks are able to have as many additional methods of payment as they choose and may include an RFID, radio frequency identification card, an app or a membership or all three. Until 2022, all Teslas could charge at all chargers and all non-Teslas could only charge at non-Tesla chargers. Really simple. When 2022, for the very first time following government legislation, Tesla allowed some of its superchargers, specifically the older V2 and V3 chargers, to be used by non-Tesla EVs. These are designated, this supercharger is open to Tesla and other EVs with CCS compatibility. 
Because of their abundance, they were welcomed, but because of their lack of a display and a contactless terminal, they were given a waiver and allowed to be, and must be, operated solely by the Tesla app. Non-Tesla EV drivers wishing to use these must download the free app and must add a payment method. When 2023, Tesla launched this new V4 charger, which included for the first time a display and a contactless terminal, allowing any driver in any EV to be able to drive up and charge solely with the use of a contactless card. No app or RFID or membership is required. Well, the price of these charged to non-Teslas is at a higher rate than that which Tesla drivers pay. Tesla, like many other EV, uh, others, EV charging networks, also offer a membership which, for a monthly fee, gives EV drivers a discount, bringing their charging rates down to that enjoyed by Tesla drivers. To get these reduced rates, the Tesla app must be used. However, although all Tesla chargers are capable of charging any EV with a CCS2 socket, some Tesla chargers are still, and probably always will, be held as exclusive to Tesla EVs only. So a quick summary, 100% of all EVs equipped with a CCS2 socket can plug into any EV public rapid or ultra rapid charger other than a Tesla supercharger and pay on the spot via contactless bank card without apps or memberships or RFID cards. Any EV with CCS2 can plug into a Tesla V4 charger designated this supercharger is open to Tesla and other EVs with CCS compatibility and pay via contactless bank card without an app or membership or RFID. Any EV with CCS2 can plug into a Tesla V2, V3 or V4 charger designated this charger is open to Tesla and other EVs with CCS2 compatibility and then pay via the app. To get reduced member rates the app must be used. Well, superchargers so designated are clearly displayed on the Tesla website, www.tesla.com. Go to tesla.com, click charging, then find, then deselect all the options other than superchargers open to all EVs with CCS2. Finally, type in a location or scroll across the map to your location. This allows you to pre-plan your route before getting into the car. The Tesla app is a free app and does not even require you to have an EV. Downloaded for free from the Google or Apple or Microsoft or Linux stores. If you have an EV, then you can enter into the app your EV make and model and also a payment method. Apple Pay, Google Pay, contactless, bank debit, credit card. Doing this simplifies the use of the supercharger as the payment is taken automatically as soon as the session is finished. Well, if you enjoy or learn from this video, please subscribe. It makes a big difference to the channel. Route planning. The Tesla app can also operate as a route planner and will only display those supercharges de designated as open to Teslas and other EVs. Alternatively, the location and postcode of the Tesla supercharger can be read and entered into your own sat-nav or route planner. There is no requirement to use the app or the website for route planning if you choose to use superchargers. There are plenty of route planners available and the number is growing. ZapMap is probably the most well known, although Google Maps now has been upgraded to operate as a route planner and not only shows all charges, but is now starting to show availability. In other words, how many are not in use and available for use. It is claimed this is heading towards real-time data. Pricing. Now you're able to navigate to any EV, public, fast, rapid or ultra rapid charger, which should you choose? In general, fast chargers are designed for longer stops, such as an overnight stay or a visit to a retail park that might include, for example, shopping, film in the cinema and a meal. Prices can range from completely free to over 60 pence per kilowatt hour. It's worth doing a bit of research beforehand to see if any free chargers are available near your route or destination. They're typically found at hotels and restaurants and often restricted to customers only. Well, for road, road trips, you'll generally use a rapid charge between 50 kilowatts and 100 kilowatts or an ultra rapid over 100, 100 kilowatts public charger. The actual speed your EV will charge at is governed by the output speed of the charger, the maximum input speed of your EV and the state of charge and temperature of your battery. 
every charger has the power displayed 50 kilowatts 350 300 joule but your car also has a maximum speed it can accept this is typically 100 to 150 kilowatts but can be as much as 350 in a very small number of evs well as a general guide wait till your battery stator charges down to 20 or 30 percent Use battery preconditioning if you have it and can operate it and top up only as much as you need. There is no need to charge to 100% every single time. Just like you probably didn't fill your petrol tank to the very brim every single time you put in petrol. Well, prices for rapid and ultra rapid are generally dearer than fast chargers, but not always. The average price in the UK is generally around 75 pence per kilowatt hour, can be as much as 85 pence and as low as 22 pence huge variation that you never find with petrol prices. So where are the cheap ones? Well your first point of contact must be your dealer. Some new EVs get totally free charging for a year or more and many cars get a discounted rate again maybe for a year or more. These will often be the cheapest you can find but you may find the charges offered are simply not in your area. Or second choose the cheapest you can find without any conditions or memberships. Many of these are in the 60 to 70 pence range and show a saving over the 75%, uh, 75 pence average that could amount to hundreds of pounds a year. A 50 kilowatt hour battery full at 65p saves 10 pound versus the same charge at 85 pence. One charge a week can save you 500 pound a year. Well, next look at memberships. If you do charge at the same place or same network regularly, then a membership may be available. For a fixed monthly fee, typically around £10, you'll get a cheaper rate per kilowatt hour. For example, a £5.49 a month membership may drop the cost from, say, £74 to £56. So charging 50 kilowatt hour once a week will cost £148 without membership, while becoming a member will drop that to £112 plus the £5.49 monthly fee. It's a saving of about £360 a year. It is likely that the cheapest you'll find are the Tesla superchargers open to non-Tesla EVs. Tesla operate a time tariff where peak time is more expensive and antisocial off-peak time is ridiculously cheap. They also offer a membership. In Bristol recently, a non-Tesla EV and a non-Tesla member charging there would pay as little as 22 pence per kilowatt hour off-peak. Same rate is available at Gatwick superchargers and several others. Well, the message is clear. Charging is far easier than you think. There are far more rapid and ultra rapid chargers than just a year ago. And in some locations, you have up to 50 chargers to choose from. Prices range from extortionate to ridiculously cheap, but it might take a bit of looking to find the cheap ones. Well, thanks for watching. Once again, if you haven't, then please subscribe. We're heading towards 10,000 subscribers and sometimes just need a little push. Subscribing costs nothing, but it does tell YouTube that many people want to watch our content and so puts our content in front of others. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave.